Uh, <laughs> it's as long as we use it, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Romans, the first chapter and the 13th verse. Did you say Romans? Romans, the first chapter and the 13th verse. Ain't going to take me but about five minutes. <laughs> Hallelujah. You tell all you know. <laughs> <clears throat> That's pretty much it. We talked about this, not this past Sunday. This past Sunday we talked about having fellowship with devils, which we'll pick up this next coming up Sunday. Um, hallelujah. Doesn't take, doesn't take long for you to realize what I'm talking about when I talk about fellowship with devils. The church has crawled in bed with the devil. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I saw this week where they're advertising for some... I don't guess they're calling them haunted houses. They've got different names for them that churches are putting on. And, trying to win souls by dressing up like the devil. Well, I tell you what. Like Grandma used to say, well, I never. Amen. Well, the Lord didn't either. Amen. The Bible says He chose the foolishness of preaching to save souls. Amen. He never one time told us to dress up like the devil in order to try to win the loss. Amen. Hallelujah. But just right up the road here, they're going to have a big doing. As a matter of fact, I think, sit down somewhere, Isaac. Matter of fact, I think they're doing it tonight and every night between now and Halloween. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Putting on a show. That the pastor's going to preach from the coffin. Oh, my. Got all the church people dressed up like demons and zombies, and they're putting on a big horror show. <clears throat> then he's going to give an altar call, I guess, if they scared anybody into getting saved. Oh, Hallelujah. But that's not, a, that's not an uncommon thing. That's pretty normal for the church as we know it today. Other places having haunted house walkthroughs and then at the end they tell you about salvation. They hope they get you scared enough about hell and demons and the devil to when they get you to the end of it, then you'll accept the Lord. <clears throat> well, that ain't the, how the Bible says that the men of God in, those, in the Bible days won souls to Christ. The Bible says that the men in those days stood up and preached the gospel. Amen. Amen. Preached about heaven, preached about hell, but it doesn't, I don't see nowhere in my Bible where it says Paul dressed up like the devil, amen? When he preached, or whenever Peter stood there on the day of Pentecost and he preached the message that he preached, my goodness, I think there was 5,000 souls saved. Not a one of them dressed up like the devil. Not a one of them had any smoke or mirrors or any Hollywood production. They simply preached Jesus and Him crucified and that was enough. Amen? Amen? But that ain't enough for the church today, uh, Sister Joyce, because we've learned different. Amen? We've learned better. Oh, you've learned worse. Amen. My, my, my. Paul says here, and he's talking to the Romans. How many of, them, how many of my five minutes is gone? I think I've used about two. He's talking to the Romans in the 13th verse. And I told you a couple of Sundays ago, it's important to know who Paul was talking to. Because Rome, during that time, was the seat, the headquarters of those that were persecuting and killing the church. The Roman Empire, its headquarters, and that's who was behind the killing of the Christians because they didn't want, you know, Jesus worship. They wanted Mary worship, or later on the Roman Catholics wanted Mary worship, but then, I don't know why they were worshiping then, their laws and their whatevers, but anyway, Paul's talking to the church in Rome, and he wrote letters, and this is probably the last place he wrote to. And he may have even been in prison. I think I heard somebody say he was in prison when he wrote it. But it's important for us to know who he was talking to because the people of Rome might have wondered why Paul hadn't came back to preach them the gospel. Some of them might have thought, well, maybe Paul's scared of the Roman Empire headquarters that are here. Some of them might have thought, well, you know, maybe Paul is ashamed of the fact that he ain't... Because see, Paul used to, be, used to rub elbows with the, with the big men in the Roman Empire. He was the chief persecutor of the church before he got saved on the road to Damascus. He was on his way to kill Christians when he got saved on the road to Damascus. He had orders in his pocket. He had papers that gave him the right to subdue, to capture, to take Christians back to be slaughtered. And then God knocks him off of his horse and flat on his back and says, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Amen? Hallelujah. And but when he got up from there, see, he, when he was on his way, he was a persecutor of the church. When he got up, he was a persecutor of the devil. 
Amen. He was number one on the devil's hit list after that because then they started hearing back at Rome. They knew they sent Paul to bring more Christians in to be killed. But they start hearing, did you hear that Paul got, Paul got what the Christians are calling born again. He's one of them. He's decided to follow Jesus. And I'm sure there were Christians who thought, and Romans who thought, well, maybe Paul's going undercover. Maybe he's pretending like he's a Christian. And whenever he gets in there and he knows where all their hiding places are at and he knows where they're at, then he'll come back and tell us where to find them. But it didn't work like that. Paul wasn't undercover. Paul wasn't on some secret mission for the Roman Empire. Paul got saved. Amen? Amen. So much so that he said, I ain't even going to use that old name I used to use because it's affiliated with persecution of the church, so I'm going to use the name Paul. Amen? Amen? So now he writes to the Romans, who the church in Rome, who may have been thinking maybe he was afraid to come back, maybe he was ashamed. Have you ever wondered if a preacher was ashamed of what he believed? I've wondered that. I've been around some preachers who kind of sunk back in the shell when they got around. You know, you, oh, when you give them a microphone and put them in front of the church and they're, oh! They, but whenever you get them outside in the public, they're like, you know, they won't talk about hunting or they won't talk about fishing. They won't talk about something besides Jesus. Amen? Amen. We had a singing on the battlefield over there at Sacramento. There was a, a preacher there and we tried our best to get him to sing, but the only thing he would do was sit over there in a chair behind somebody else with his head down the whole time he was out there on the street preaching and singing. Paul's getting ready to tell them why he hadn't been there. And he wants to make sure he starts this out in the, in the 13th verse by saying, I would not have you ignorant. Romans 1 and 13. I would not have you ignorant. Meaning he's facing to clear something up. There had been an argument maybe. Maybe he got some work. Maybe somebody told him, Paul, you better write the church of Rome because they think you're afraid to come to Rome to preach. They think you're ashamed of what you got from Jesus. So he says, I want to clear this thing up. I don't want you to be ignorant. He says, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was led hitherto. Now what that means is, there were many times he wanted to go to Rome to preach, but something happened. Something came up or God had led him a different way. Or maybe, maybe the enemy brought things up to hinder him in his journey and not let him get to where the people in Rome was at, the church in Rome at the time. He says, I want you to know there's been a lot of times I've wanted to come to preach to you. Amen? That I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. He says, I'm a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. Then he says, so as much as is in me, with everything, so as much as is within me is, with everything that's in me, I want to come to Rome, the headquarters. Now listen, Paul knew that the persecution of the Christians began in Rome and then spread it out. Amen. He knew that the seat of the devil of that day was Rome. But he desired, he longed to go there to that place. We don't normally do that. When we look for a house to move into, do we look for the worst side of town or the best? Amen. Amen. If we find out our neighbors are drug, drug addicts, what kind of attitude do we have? I ain't going to move our next door to them. Well, why not? You might be able to get them saved. Amen? We're more concerned about us than we are about the lost. But Paul says, I'm more concerned about the lost than I am about me. I am more than willing. I am ready to come, but things keep happening. I hadn't been able to. I don't want you to be ignorant about this. I want to clear the air. I want you to know why I haven't came. Amen? He goes on to say, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Did you hear that? He's making sure they know he's ready to preach the gospel. Then in verse 16, what does he say? For I am not ashamed of the gospel. You might be thinking, why would Paul be saying this? He had talked to the church of Corinth. He had talked to the church of Ephesians. They probably all knew that Paul was not ashamed of the gospel. But he spends his time here writing to the, Rome, the church in Rome. And he says, I want you to know. Some of you might think I'm ashamed of this Jesus that I met. Oh, hallelujah, on the road to Damascus. But I want you to know I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. What else he say? I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first and also to the Gentile. He was saying, I'm not ashamed of Jesus Christ. And that ain't why I haven't came, because I'm not ashamed of Jesus. We need some church people like that. Amen. 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 Yes. Listen, the Mormons ain't ashamed to share their faith with you, even though it's a damnable doctrine. They don't believe in the same Jesus we believe in. 
Look at their stuff and they'll tell you. Their, their own writings will tell you that. The Mormons don't, don't follow the same Jesus that you follow. Read their doctrine and you'll find out. They don't follow the same Jesus. The Jehovah's Witness are not ashamed of what they believe to be the truth. They'll come to your door, knock on your door, and say, you know, are you, are you, I don't know, I don't know what kind of wording they use because usually when they find out that I'm a born again, spirit filled believer, holy roller, they say, well, here, I'll see you later, amen. But whatever it is that they, they believe, I know they don't believe there's a hell, amen. I know they don't believe that there's a hell, and that alone is enough to know to stay away from the Jehovah's Witness doctrine. But my point is, they're not ashamed of their false doctrine. The Mormons are not ashamed of their false doctrine. Most Catholics are not ashamed of their false doctrine. The only ones we got ashamed are are the ones that you know afraid to be recognized I don't want to be labeled as one of those old holy rollers it's those that really know what the real thing is amen Paul knew what the real thing was and he wasn't ashamed he said if I was able to if I could with everything that's within me I want to stand at Rome and proclaim that Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation he's the one that saved me he's the answer for the Jews he's the answer for the Greeks and it's still the same today he still, I don't care what they say on television when you turn on your TV to the Christian channel on Sunday morning. Jesus Christ is still the only way to the Father. There's no other way to get there other than through Him. Amen? You can't get there talking to Mary. You can't get there confessing to a priest. You can't get there by any other means. Somebody said the other day, well, we're all going to get to God. We just have different ways. Oh, no, no, no. There is but one way to God and Jesus Christ and I'm the way. I'm the truth and I'm the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. Not another Jesus. Not another gospel. Not another doctrine but Jesus Christ and Amen. Him crucified. Amen. And we need some people like Daniel when they told him you can't pray no more. If you pray we're going to throw you in the lion's den. The Bible says he went up to his place of prayer. He opened the windows just like he always had. He got down on his knees just like he always had. And he began to pray toward Jerusalem. Amen. Daniel didn't let what the officials say. They may come to the place where we have to make the same stand. You might be able to be an undercover Christian today. You might go to church on Sunday morning and Sunday night and then live like the devil all week long. But sooner or later, you're going to have to fish your cut bait. Sooner or later, you're going to have to take a stand or fall. Amen. Sooner or later, you're going to have to decide whether you're going to serve Jesus or whether you're going to turn your back on him. And when they come to you like they did Daniel, they say, Listen, if you don't fall down and worship this, if you don't deny your God, we're going to throw you in the lion's den, then what are we going to do? I've heard people say, oh, I won't bow down to the Antichrist. I'll make it through the tribulation period. I won't deny Him. I won't give in. Listen, the spirit of Antichrist is in the land today and you're already giving in. The real thing Himself, the man Himself has not stepped forward, but Paul, or one of the writers said, that the spirit of Antichrist is in the land today. And you're already compromising you already can't live for Jesus, but you think you're going to be able to live for Him during the tribulation period. Oh, my, my, my. You better get right now. Amen. You better get right now. Hallelujah. While the Lord's dealing with your heart. And we need some people like Daniel that'll say, I don't care what you say. I'm going to pray anyway. Amen. And the Bible says he went up to his chamber and he threw open the windows like he always had. And he prayed toward Jerusalem. And what I was saying was we may get to the point where we have to do that. Amen. Amen. We may have to get to the point where we have to do that. That's right. When the president signs a decree that you can't pray in public, uh -huh. we may have to find us a street corner and stand there and say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray right now. Oh God, that you move upon this sinful and pitiful land, that you save the lost, that you deliver those that are bound. We may have to take a stand. Amen. Amen. Right. All but the church today, if you get them in front of the spotlight and they say, well, you mean to tell me that Jews are going to go to hell if they don't accept Christ? You know what they say? Most of them? Well, and I wouldn't say that. The Bible says that. The Bible says that. Yes. Don't, I don't care if you're a Jew. And the Bible teaches this. I don't care if you're a Jew or if you're a Gentile. You ain't born into this unless you come through the blood. Amen. Amen. Right. Ain't nobody born saved. Amen. I don't care if you're a Jew. I don't care if you're circumcised or uncircumcised. If you're a Hebrew, if you're a Greek, a Gentile, I don't care who you are. Unless you come by way of the blood, you ain't born again. Amen. That's right. And we need some people to boldly stand for the truth in these last days. Yes. Amen. We need some people like the three Hebrew children. And I'm not going to go there because I'm closing.
Told you I wasn't going to preach for five minutes. <coughs> Hallelujah. The three Hebrew children, when they came to him, said, Listen, if you, when you hear the music, if you'll bow down and begin to worship the statue of Nebuchadnezzar, then all will be well. But if you don't, we're going to take you and we're going to throw you into the fiery furnace. I wonder how many Christians today would have been able to stand that kind of test. Amen. What they do? They stood there and said, Listen, our God is more than able to deliver us, but even if He don't, even if He don't, even if He don't, we will not bow to this image. Amen. Oh, we could use some Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's in the day that we live in. Amen. That are not willing to compromise. That are not willing to bow their knee to Baal. And i got news for you. There is still a remnant that will not bow their knee to Baal. Amen. I know it gets harder and harder to see, Aunt Joyce, because so many people have compromised. So many people have turned their back on the Lord in the old way. Amen. But the Bible says he had a remnant in Elijah's day. Paul speaks to him over there in the New Testament that he had a remnant in that day. And we've got a remnant today in the year 2011 that's going to stand for the truth and not going to swallow every lie that the devil has out of the pit of hell. And we're going to stand on the Word of God. We're not going to be ashamed because we use a King James. We're not going to be ashamed because we're Pentecostal. We're not going to be ashamed because we talk in tongues. We're not going to be ashamed of Jesus Christ. He is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. And you ain't going to get there unless you come by way of the cross. I am not ashamed of the Gospel. Paul wanted the Romans to know that. I'm not ashamed. Sometimes I wonder if the Lord, and I know He knows everything, so I'm just rambling on this part, but you ever think maybe, you know, just, just uh, hypothetically that He might think, well, I don't know if they really believe me or not. Their actions are certainly not. So I don't know if they're ashamed of me or not. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before the Father and the angels. Amen. I'm telling you, there's coming a time. I know you've heard this all your life, but there's coming a time that you're going to have to stand up or sit down. Amen. You're going to have to stand up for Jesus or kneel to the devil. Amen. You're going to have to kneel at the cross or kneel at the altar of Baal. You're going to have to decide who you're serving. Amen. We got too many people trying to serve two masters and the Bible says that won't work. That's right. That won't work. No. Amen. You cannot serve two gods. You can be, be like, who was it? Uh, was it Elijah up there on Mount Carmel that said if God be God, serve Him. If Baal's God, we'll serve Him. But let's see which one's got the power. And God sends down the fire. And the people start hollering, the Lord, He is God. Amen. The Lord, He is God. And that's what we need to do today. Amen. There ain't no two or three ways. No. I don't care what Oprah says. I don't care what Joel says. I don't care what Billy Graham has said in his older age. I don't know if the man's got Alzheimer's or something's happened to his brain because he used to preach Jesus was the only way to get there. And they did some interviews with him where he said, well, I'm not the judge. And all the Bible is. Yeah. The Bible's the judge. And the Bible says you got to go by way of Jesus or you don't go. I don't care if you're Hindu or if you're Muslim, if you're Pentecostal, if you're Church of God or Baptist or Foursquare, you don't go unless you come through Jesus. Amen. You right. don't go unless you come through Jesus. And I'm not ashamed of the Gospel. No. That's what Paul told the Romans and that's what's going to be required of us in these last days. Amen. If we stick around long enough for some of the great tribulation that's going to come up, and I don't know how much we'll have to go through, we may have to stand before rulers and say, I will not deny Christ. I just wonder how much of the church is ready to do that. Because they deny Him over such... In the times that we live in, they deny Him. And we ain't seen nothing yet. We think hard times have set in if we go to Arby's and they've ran out of roast beef. Amen? No, we ain't seen nothing yet. We better get ready to make a stand Amen? Because the devil knows he's running out of time. We said this earlier. That's why he's fighting harder than he's ever fought before. I just wish the church knew that we was running out of time. He's smarter than most of the church. Amen? He's smarter than most of the church. He knows his time is just about up. So he's going to fight and take as many with him as he can. I don't know about you, but I pray right now for boldness to be able to stand before anybody and say, I'm not ashamed of Jesus. Amen? What He's done for me. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Anybody else have anything tonight?